Hey there, fellows. All right, so in this episode we have a new car, a new guinea pig, if you will. Now, we've gotten quite a few people asking we show what a dry sump lubrication system is all about. So let's set one up. We'll delete the factory oil pump. And, of course, we'll convert the stock oil pan. Instead of the regular pump, I suggest we use this power steering pump. Now, this type of lubrication allows the engine to even be flipped onto its side without oil making it into the cylinders and inducing hydro lock. This type of system is a pretty common thing on sports cars, like you see it in drifting and so on. Come to think of it in drifting... Most people seem to opt for additional baffles in the oil pan to keep the oil from splashing around. As for us, well, we'll be making what's essentially a dry sump system. We'll fit a pump that's constantly going to extract the oil and keep things dry even if the car were to flip. Also a reservoir to feed the pump which is going to... send oil into the engine under high pressure. We'll figure out how to make this work as we go along, and then we'll see how effective this is. Alright, let's make a DIY dry sump system for a lot of them. Let's do this. DIY dry sump system for a lot of them. Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. Okay, here's where we're at with this. We've already modified the oil pan, which no longer contains a pump, pickup, or anything else like that. We've also blocked off the hole that the factory pump sends the oil through, to prevent any dips in pressure. Now, given that we are dealing with dry sump, or more appropriately, semi-dry sump lubrication, we are not running any mechanical pump. Instead, we are using this electric unit right here, which is a supplementary cooling system water pump. Fingers crossed that it's up to the task. I mean, it's not like it won't provide any flow, it definitely will. What I'm worried about is how it's going to take to hot oil. But then it has no issue with hot coolant, so if I had to guess, hot oil shouldn't be a problem. Now let's discuss the modifications we have to do up top. All right, modifications to the top of the motor. The steering pump is in place, so that's our mechanical unit, we've got that covered. And this is the plumbing setup we've put together out of high-pressure hoses. Now the reason we're using high-pressure lines, well... The engine really doesn't require anything more than about three atmospheres. It's best to keep the pressure low to avoid any issues. Meanwhile, this pump is rated at about... I think it's like 110 bar, which is extremely high. And that's something we had to keep in mind when choosing the hoses. Here we have a heavy-duty gauge to monitor the pressure, which goes all the way to 160 bar. Now the plan is to start reducing the pressure until we see the needle begin to move around. At that point we can fit a different manometer. At this stage a more delicate unit could simply break. Anyway, yeah, so we figured out the plumbing. This is for a banjo bolt. We are going to be feeding the oil into the engine through the hole for the oil pressure sensor. That's something we have done in the past and gotten adequate results. We've got a special adapter on this end. 
Now I do see a slight problem with mounting the tank for the oil. The thing is that the power steering pump is sitting fairly high in the bay. And the oil has to basically drip down into it. As we all know, the steering fluid tank is meant to sit higher than the pump. Now we don't want to mount it on the roof. So somebody suggested that we place it right here. While installing an additional electric pump to feed the oil into the power steering pump. Because it is going to need that extra bit of help, I reckon. Something we definitely don't want is for the pump to start sucking air in. Because that's going to result in the pressure dropping and might damage the engine, God forbid. And it is a good engine. Right then, let's finish putting all of it together and go try it out. We'll attempt to adjust the pressure and hopefully we're able to, I mean, we've never done it before. Okay, well, it's time to finish the job and go do some testing. Let's do this. All right, the system is up and running, it's all good. I've got the pressure gauge inside the cabin, and this will be the first startup. We haven't done anything to the pump as of yet, and now we're about to see what happens. Fire it up. What's wrong? That's odd. I don't see anything happening. We don't have any pressure. The needle isn't moving at all for whatever reason. That's curious. I have no idea what's going on. Seriously, what gives? Okay, now we're gonna try using a more precise manometer. Let's see what happens. And we have nothing. No, it just moved, even if only barely. But why does it drop when the revs go up? And rise when it hits idle. How does that work? Okay, so it seems like we've run into the same exact problem as in the pressure washer episode. So apparently, the pump simply doesn't have enough flow. It's less than what the engine can take in. Let me put it this way. The oil evacuates from in between the rubbing parts, so to speak, and the pump is unable to generate any excess pressure. Now, I recall us compressing the spring to increase the pressure. Okay, let's try that again. And have another look. All right, now we're getting somewhere. It is fluctuating, though. Engine operation is a bit unstable. And that's affecting the reading. Honestly, I'm afraid to even give it some gas. Do it anyway. This is quite nerve-wracking. I mean, look what happens when I press it a bit harder. We can take it to five. Something just let go, right? I think we even know what that might be. What's up? We should fit a smaller nut. Otherwise, what can happen? The oil filter might grenade. The oil filter is the weakest link. 
too much pressure and it can explode. And so we're going to have to try and find a way to dial the pressure in. We don't want there to be any more than five. Unless we want the filter to break and the oil to pour out. Okay, here we go again. Okay, we have pressure with the engine sitting at idle. This doesn't have attack, but I'm guessing it's turning at about 650 revs. Switch it off. What happened? The belt came off. Oh, for crying out loud. I thought something ruptured in there. Is everything all right? Okay, great, we have pressure. It's about a kilo at idle, which is sufficient. Beautiful. Marvelous. Did you see what just happened? So the stock pump is a gear type, right? And the flow it generates is pretty impressive. It's way more powerful than what we're using. Let's compress the spring a bit more. It took a while, but we got there. We played around with a bunch of different washers, nuts, springs. At the end of the day, we were able to increase the flow. And now we got a healthy amount of pressure inside the engine. Now it goes all the way up to 5, wait, actually it goes up to 7 bar. Now I am worried about the filter, but let's hope it holds up. I mean, it got this far. So I'm expecting it to be just fine out on the street. Right, let's head out for a drive and see how all of this fares with the car moving. Now I should say, I expected this pump to give us enough flow, but as a matter of fact, it fell a bit short. Now you might recall how with the unmodified pressure washer setup, didn't matter how much throttle we gave it, the water pressure stayed the same. And by extension, I assumed that we'd get stable pressure in this case, regardless of engine speed. But then the higher the revs, the higher the stress. And of course, the more oil pressure is required to get a nice and thick oil film going. And that's exactly how we got it to work, by means of installing a couple of washers. As in, the pressure increases with the engine speed. In any case, we've got a stable 1.5 to 2 kilos at idle, though we do see a slight drop when the oil gets hot. Which isn't that big of a problem, I mean, it's still more than enough for this engine. There isn't a ton of load at idle anyway, so yeah, it'll do. Night, let's go out for a drive and see how this does out there. Let's do this. Okay, starting the engine. There it goes, we have pressure. Everything's alright. Here we go. Excellent. Where should we go? Go left. Left, you say? All right, let's go left. We have pressure. That's nice. Wow, it drops almost to zero when the engine misfires. What we drove past? It dropped again. Maybe it's all in the oil pan. Do we have pressure? We do. Okay. 
I don't get it. That was a rapid decrease. Okay, so after going for a drive, we've worked out that the system has one minor flaw. The oil tank placement is fine, nothing wrong there. We've got two little pumps. One feeds oil into the steering pump, the other sucks oil out from the pan to keep it dry. Now, for some reason, when you lightly apply the throttle at idle, everything is okay with the pressure. You give it some more, the pressure increases, and I was seeing a very healthy reading. So evidently, the flow increases together with the revs. The problem is, the pump that's sucking the oil out from the pan isn't able to get it back into the tank quick enough which is not ideal. Now, a legit dry sump system would have several lines for sucking out the oil. And so I suggest we remove the oil pan, weld on another tube, and fit a second little pump to suck the oil out. Hopefully that prevents the oil starvation and the dips in pressure. Okay, well, let's get this thing onto a lift. I mean, with two pumps, our dry sump setup should work like a charm. Okay, let's do this. Okay, you ready? Yeah, I'm recording. That's about 10 seconds. Yeah, 10 seconds. Okay, so we have found out why, after a few minutes of driving, the oil pressure might start to plummet. So look here, we've decided to fit a stock oil pan to the motor instead of that custom one we made. You see, when the engine is running, you've got hot oil dripping down and splashing around, which can turn it into foam. And the pump was unable to extract that foamy motor oil fast enough. Also, that pan we made didn't have any baffles in it, it was really slender, and though we're not entirely sure, but it is very much a possibility that the crank was dipping into the oil and producing even more foam. And all of that was just too much for the little pump. We tried one, then the two. Something was circulating, but we didn't know what exactly. And it turns out it was pumping foam. So yeah. It wasn't able to extract it quick enough. As a result, the tank was getting depleted, and the steering pump couldn't generate enough pressure due to a lack of oil coming in. And so that's why we'll be using a normal pan. That one was way too thin. And there was no space left for fitting any baffles. Okay, now I want to show you something else up top. Okay, guys, check this out. We used to be running a separate pump to feed the power steering pump, right? Well, we've decided that having that pump here is completely unnecessary. The supplementary electric pump. We suspect that it actually might have been getting in the way. Essentially preventing this pump from receiving all of the oil it needs. Strange that, I mean, the pump we're running down below does a fantastic job. Here, I don't know. Some voice inside of me suggested we should get rid of it, which we have, and everything is fine. And now that we've revised the system, let's head out and go for a drive, see where the pressure is at. I am super curious. Okay, the engine is warm. We're looking good. Now, I don't know the exact temperature, since the gauge isn't quite there yet. I'm seeing about a kilo at idle, which is fluctuating, but whatever. Okay, here we go. Uh-huh. Let's go left, sure. No problem. 
What do we got? Everything is fine. Isn't that nice? We have stable pressure. Again, that's good. All right, first, second. Very nice. That's about two and a half kilos, fairly low in the rev range. I'm not even close to revving it out. And at higher revs, did you see how the pressure was climbing with the revs? All the way up to five kilos. Holy cow. Oh, wow. The road won't allow me to go any faster. Okay, then. I'll just take it easy. The papers are all over the floor. Eh, whatever. Everything seems to be all right so far. But given we are running... An electric pump. I'd better keep an eye on this gauge. A lot of people actually don't even pay attention to whatever the gauges are telling them. There it is. The engine has obviously gotten quite a bit warmer and I can smell burning oil. I mean, we have been taking stuff apart, moving it around. So there were a few spills here and there. We of course did clean off what we could, but you're never gonna do a perfect job with that. Apparently there was still a bit of oil left somewhere. Well, guys, the system indeed works. And quite well at that, I might add. The dry sump is in fact dry. There is no oil inside the pan. Well, as far as you can tell using the dipstick. See, nothing. Let me try that again. Yeah, it's dry. And all of the oil is inside this tank. So, yeah. This is a working setup, and we essentially cobbled it together out of whatever parts we could find. Like the steering pump, though admittedly we did have to custom make the hoses. We were afraid the pressure would be extreme, and so we bought some heavy-duty lines. When in fact we probably could have made do with ordinary hoses, rated at like 16 bar, because the pressure really didn't get all that high. Anyway, the whole point of this experiment was to put together a homemade system using components that you'd find lying around. And if you had no idea what a dry sump system looks like, well, there you go. The oil pan that's on the engine remains dry, the oil is in a dedicated tank, and from there a separate pump feeds it into the lubrication system. As we all know, oil serves the purpose of lubrication and cooling, and so... Overall, this went pretty well. Honestly, we weren't even sure we'd be able to pull this one off. But as a matter of fact, this experiment was a success. It's a fairly effective system, though you probably don't want to use the parts we did to make it. Specialized pumps and other components are preferable. Now, I'm not sure if you can even find a system made for a lot of them, but in any case, it's a nifty thing, and it's a very good addition to a sports car engine. Granted, typically these things don't come cheap, but we decided to try and go the cheapo route with this anyway. So hopefully this has given you some idea of how such a system is set up. It's really not all that complicated. Well, aside from maybe making an oil pan with all of those baffles, this video has taught us that you won't get far by simply welding up a slender pan. So go ahead and give it a try, hopefully you can get it to work. And that's all I got for you. Watch us, subscribe, send in your suggestions, comment, give us a big thumbs up. Alright, catch you later.